Good evening, Savidi. So nice to see you on this Thursday. How's it going? Going good. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. It's such a treat to get to have a fun conversation on the Thursday. I feel like we're inching toward the end of the week, but like something needs to zhuzh it up, get us a little bit more energized to make it through there, right? I don't know if it resonates for you, but I need some energy. And I think this conversation is going to be do the trick. Definitely. Definitely. I need the same thing. Yes. uh, So I have a fun question for you. Thursdays for me are a important like snacking night. It's the first night of the week that I let myself have like a dessert after dinner. And so I make myself some brownies. Do you have a favorite sweet treat or something that you really enjoyed consuming this week? Maybe it was savory. I don't know. I don't judge. Well, actually, uh, I don't really, I'm not, I don't really like sweets that much, but you know, I, I I just started a, a, a good relationship with Reese's Reese's Pieces. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I think my daughter got me eating that a lot because when you know when she comes here, that's her favorite thing to eat. So, yep, you know Reese's I'm a Reese's Pieces. pieces that's what's guy. up. So they're like the M and M's, but they're Reese's, right? Like they're the shape of an M and M's. Yeah, uh, no, the Reese's Pieces is the the little in the circles in the in the like little cup. The oh, little okay, cup. The classic kind. I yeah, so I'm you know I do the Reese's pieces and you know I I gotta watch myself a little bit because you know I'm I'm a gym junkie at the same time, but if I want to cheat and get my nice snacks together, Reese's pieces and you can never get enough popcorn either. Oh my gosh. I, I'm glad that you said that combination because too much sweet without the salty just doesn't do it justice to either one, right? Like they need to right. coexist. Oh, yeah. it, it, oh, it, yeah. it matters. Oh, that's a great, that's inspiring. I think that that might have to be a snack on my near horizon. So thank right. you for that. Um, well, for anyone who has not met you, this is Savitti, musical artist and community leader joining us today from not New York City, somewhere else that's really cool. And I'm excited to learn both about you and where you're from and your story and and all of those good things. So thank you for being here again, Savitti. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. I would love to start back in your timeline. You know, where were you growing up? What was that like? Um, All of those things. And were you listening to music? What were you listening to? Paint a picture, if you would. Well... From St. Paul, Minnesota, you know, for those that don't know, a, a, a little cold city. When I say cold, cold. <laughs> uh, Minnesota is the nickname for, you know, that a lot of snow. But, you know, from born and raised St. Paul, Minnesota, started off doing music like in, in my early, you know, I started rhyming when I was actually like seven years old, you know. Seven years old, listening to Ron DMC. You know, that was more of my era coming up. Uh, and, you know, when I first heard them, you know, everybody wanted to be a cool kid and, you know, wanted to fit in with what Ron DMC was doing. So they was the first that inspired me to do the music along with, you know, growing up in my neighborhood with my family members and people that did it before me was rappers and, you know, do it into the music. So you know, I kind of had no choice. It was like, you know, I was around it. So that's how, when I first discovered it, you know, thought it was something dope for me to get into. And then I started taking it serious a little bit more as I got older, you know, and then some living situations happened, you know, some, some of my, you know, some, some pain was in there and, you know, going through some um, struggles of my life. And that's when I started taking it serious because I would just, you know, rap my pain, you know, tell my story, just kind of vent, you know, if I didn't really have too many people to lean on that would listen to me. So, you know, I, my, my music never turned me down. You know, I, I, I would listen to myself, <laughs> you know, so basically that's how I got serious. You know, I started off rhyming, thinking it was cool, run DMC, some pain hit, start trying to tell my story to myself. And I, I actually figured out that I was kind of good at it. You know, I spit it to a couple other people. They're like, man, you have you thought about, you know, taking it serious a little bit? And, you know, I'm like, nah, you know, this is it was kind of a personal thing for me to vent to myself, you know, but here I am now. <laughs> Such a cool journey. And I love, yeah. you know, in the moment, I think it's it's impossible for any of us to know, like, 
how thing, how tools will serve us down the line. Right. So it sounds like for you, the skill of like just appreciating music right. and melody came before you even knew what it was going to mean for your life. Right. But you were being equipped to, yeah. to make it something that was going to fuel your survival, your thriving, like all of these exactly. important things down the line. So that right. is so right. chilling, right? When we think about it later, um, that's amazing how that. Yeah. So now I get to actually, you know, cause I'm more comfortable with it and situations has changed and, you know, you know, I keep some, some factors in there and some, you know, inspire about, you know, so I do speak some still about some past situations to inspire those to, you know, you could break through it, but now I'm at a comfort zone where I could, okay, I can mix some of what I saw and run DMC in there, the, the cool side of it with just advice, you know, versatility and really have fun with it just besides just focusing on, okay, the pain part of it. So now I'm, you know, diving in different avenues with it. Yeah, like if I, can do, if, if I can do a, um, like a, um, a feature with, you know, Lady Gaga, or that's what kind of, I want to go all out with it. You know, I don't want to just stay in one lane. I want to show my versatility and, you know, my whole full potential of what I could do with it since, since, since I'm better now, you know? <laughs> yeah, what a cool thing to get to celebrate and build off of. Um, right. You mentioned this like cool factor in a few different ways. And I want to know what the cool factor was for you. Like as a kid, was it about, you know, the wardrobe? Was it the, 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 the oh, saunter yeah. of the person? Like, <laughs> yeah, paint a picture. Oh, yeah. What was that? Definitely like? one of the things it is the wardrobe, you know, big, you know, big gold chains, the Kangos, the Adidas, and stuff like that. So Run DMC was, you know, that that was them, them was the first people that that I saw that was cool. That was so cool. Like the definition of what what cool meant, being cool. You know, uh, before I even understood and dived into the meaning of uh, definition of hip hop, I just saw a, a bunch, a, a couple cool guys on the stage with gold chains. I'm like okay, I want to be like them, <laughs> you know, I want to be that. So that was the first thing that I saw about them. And, um, you know, I think I, I, of course, I'm myself with it now, but, you know, I, I think I mastered the game of being cool, you know, after seeing, <laughs> you know, I mastered yeah. that. That's so fun. Um, I'm imagining, you know, if you had been growing up in New York City at that time, maybe a lot of your peers would have been into Run DMC and like dressing similarly. I imagine if you had been in like Arkansas, another place that I lived, like a lot of your peers would not have known who Run DMC was maybe, or they wouldn't have right. been yeah. they stood out as a store thumb. Yeah. In Minnesota, where would that be on that spectrum? Like, were your friends listening to the same things, dressing the same way, or were you oh, yeah. like a black sheep in that situation? Yeah, you know, especially like around, you know, my age group, my era, you know, um, I could speak everything that I just said, I could really speak for all the other artists like here that this, that's not just in Minnesota, but every artist that's from my era, you know, around my range of Ron DMC, I could, I'm actually speaking for them too. They, they felt the same way. Like it's, it's, it's a known fact, you know, they may say it different with their experiences of what they saw in that, but you know, they, they feel the same way, you know, yeah. run, some people go way back to the, you know, way before run DMC, but that ain't my era, but you know, like, well, with the run DMC era, you know, I could pretty much be for all the other artists too, you know, when they came and then after them was, you know, then the LL Cool J and then, you know, <laughs> when he came out with that, I'm bad. That, that's when I'm, that's when I want to be him. I'm like, I ain't really scoop run DMC to the side, but it was like, okay, who's this guy? There's a now, new kid in like, town. I like him now. Let yeah. me, let me, he got the Kangos too. He got the, you know, so that was the whole era of that. And I'm okay. definitely, you could speak for every other artist. Yeah, I am. Um, sometimes, so I take a bus to work sometimes and sometimes it gets, it. the bus route stops early. So I end up walking and there's a hat shop I go by and I see some Kango hats in the window and I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, this is such a fun, yeah. I, I don't know. Is it fair to say it's a throwback? Like, are they cool? Oh right yeah, now? definitely. Okay, yep. so uh, like, I'm like, this is a fun throwback moment. Like to just walk by, it makes me stop and think about all the culture that's surrounded the Kango. So it's, it's really fun. Yeah, definitely. That so sometimes they have, you know, throwback. They just had one actually, actually it's New Year's that passed. Some, some of the uh, known DJs, they had a throwback 90s 
throwback 90s uh new year's oh so, so fun. everybody came and some people have kangos and the big you know fake gold costume ropes and around their neck and we just actually had one of them that's how i brought my new year's in Oh my gosh. Okay. Bring back the Kango. It's a movement. We're, we're all yeah. on board. Um, I, so from what I'm getting to know about you, um, the lyrics have come to be something that are very meaningful, I think. Um, and I, I'm curious about when you were a kid listening to Run DMC, listening to his, um, you know, successors, were you as tuned into the lyrics at that time? Like, did it, did it mean as much to you then? Were you thinking about, you know, the content of what they were singing about or, how did you start to grow in your attuneness to not just oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh yeah. <clears throat> you know, listening to them, oh yeah, you know, you everything they were saying is is just uh represent dope, you know, just dope. That's another word for cool for those who, you know, just just dope, you know, just everything they saying. Um, the rhyming was on time, you know. Uh it was from the rhyme and from how they dressed. They talked about their styles and hip hop. And, you know, it was just like suck MCs. And, you know, I like when um L O Cool J said, like, I crush you like a jelly bean. You know what I'm saying? Stuff, stuff like that way back was was fire. Like when he said that line right there, we like, oh, you know, all that was just it was fire. It's hard to explain. It's like you crush him like a jelly bean. And he smushed his leg down like he crushed the jelly bean. Uh -huh. All that was, it was like if someone was in the, watching gymnastics or, or like football, we all like, you know, seeing touchdowns from our favorite team, you know, lines like that was kind of like, you know, compared to that. So, yeah, I definitely understood where they was coming from with it, you know, saying little jazzy stuff and all that. So we, we picked up on it real quick. Yeah. But not that we, not that we just like, but it had to be you. You had to really be fresh in order to rap like that or talk like that. Um, otherwise, I would think that, you know, if you, 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 it would be kind of fake. Like if you thought about the words and you wasn't really that, then, you know, you, you didn't, you don't got the license to, to rap like that. But so they true. was fresh and I picked it up pretty cool because I was fresh. That's awesome. Um, and I think that is so true, right? If you're trying to, um, don like a costume with your words people can tell right that that's not your authentic right. story um oh yeah yeah you know gotta be authentic with it yeah so what were you rhyming about when you were little do you remember what your first kind of oh yeah i do actually <laughs> so be like i said before i got a little older and start uh you know rapping about my story in pain and venting venting to myself about that you know, uh, back in my Run DMC days, I remember I had some like, like um, sucker MCs. I'll see you later. I'm fenced to get on the elevator up to the fourth floor. Show what you know. Down to the crib and smoke that bow. Smoking <laughs> that bow is what you need. I'm sick of you smoking all the weed. Smoking that weed is bad for your health. So get out of my face with your doggy boy breath. Now, like that would be considered whack as shit right now, right? But that's the rap I wrote when I was seven years old. <laughs> like fire though. The rhythm right. is so good. What I just spit to you, me and my brother, he had he had half but part of that. And we literally wrote that when we were seven years old. Like that's that's the very first rap I ever wrote. That sucky MCs I see, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. amazing. Oh I still God. remember it today. Yeah, because that was the that's the foundation. That's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. And so and it's like if you didn't have you know, Sucker MC came from like, uh, came from Run DMC. So if you didn't really, if you, and everybody just uh, grabbed on to it and everybody was saying it. So if you didn't use Sucker MC in a line or two in one of your songs, like you wasn't popping. We all, we all we kind of took that from them and ran with it, you know? <laughs> and does that just mean like you MC who's like a fool? Like, is that? Yeah, like Sucker MCs mean like you know you 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 from the other side like you a suck you a suck mc like yeah. you can't get you can't get with me you know we don't we don't deal with suck mcs man you know what I'm oh like, it was a, it was a little jazzy a little cool thing to say and a little like, this yeah you know, oh that's awesome um so you you just kind of um alluded to how that was your starting point right and then you started to tell 
your story through your work, right? Right. Um, I'd love to hear more about whether that was like a specific point in time where you're like, okay, I'm pivoting or it was something gradual or just like kind of the steps that got you from sucker MC to, um, yeah, from, so, so, from, or sucker whatever MC, from sucker MC, like I said, that, that was like at the beginning of when things was, you know, I was young, you know, I was still in the household with my mom and everything. And, and you know, uh, just face in front of the TV, being inspired by Run DMC. Like, so before I, before I just was birthed from the hospital and came home and just grew and said, hey, I, I decided to look at this TV and it was already going on around me and my family. You know, my older cousins, uncles, they'd be with their boom boxes, you know, had a big, big boom boxes and dressed like Ron DMC already in the house. So, you know, that's when, that's kind of what inspired me to, like okay well what are they watching let me watch what they watching so then from that point on it went from the sucker mcs and to getting put out the house and growing up you know at an early age getting put out and you know gang banging you know i started gang banging because you know when you when you kicked out on the street and and you living in the neighborhood that's that's what everybody's doing yeah. You know, so it was kind of hard to escape that, you know, being on your own, the, the only people that you think, the only people that you have to turn to are the gangbangers and, you know, the drug dealers and the killers. And, the, you know, yeah, you know, that's kind of a, it's, it's an effed up situation that, that we have to live in, you know, living in poverty. So that's what happened, you know, um, uh, so not, not to point, 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 blame, 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 you know, me and my mother straight now in situations, but you know, when I was put out at an early age, then that's when, you know, uh, but see a lot of, let me just quick say this, a lot of people, you don't really have to be put out because most, not everybody is put out on the street. Some people, if you're living in the hood in a certain area in poverty, you know, you can still, be living at home with your parents and they try to do the best for you. But when you go outside, what do you, what you going to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you go outside, you don't, you don't see uh positive role models sitting on your porch. Like, Hey, let's go to this, this baseball game, man. And let's go, let's go chill and let's go play kickball here and go talk to the mentors over here. And, and give out free food to the homeless. We don't see that in our neighborhood. You know, we see when you go outside, no matter how good the, the, the household is, you can have a Marine Corps dad or a police officer dad or, or judge or all these good uh, people that we claim to be inspiring in the house. But when you go outside, it's, it's where you live. Yeah. It's the neighborhood that you can't get out of. You know, so that's so that so then that's that's kind of what you know turned into a, a, a whole mess, <laughs> like you know. So that's what did that, and then it hurt it a lot when I was going through certain struggles because of that. And you know, I was one that really didn't want to, you know, adapt to it. I wasn't willingly like, yeah, like like this was up. This this the life you lived in. I didn't want to gang bang. I was one of the ones that didn't want to. But I had to because everybody was doing it for one. And that's what I thought. I thought loved in me because, you know, the money you get, you know, the cars, the clothes, the girls, all that's there for you. But it, it's like a manipulating trick at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It reminds me of um, in like the first image that came to me in scripture is when you know the devil is like tempting Jesus, right? He's like, you can have this thing and you can have that. Yeah, thing. You can have all like these that. things, right? And and we are all so susceptible to that, right? With whatever anyone puts yeah. in front of us. Even I think, you know, to this day, I get an Instagram ad. It's like it's 20% off. I'm like, now I need all of it. Like this is, <laughs> this is so powerful, right? Like all of a sudden, yeah. all of this can be mine and still it's going to be thousands of dollars, 20 plus 20% 20 off, right? Um, the world is pretty mm -hmm. powerful. And so it sounds like in your neighborhood, there was this whole power. And, and see, right. Help. And a lot of the stuff that I'm saying, I, I'm speaking for everyone. Like there's not one person that grew up in my neighborhood or any other na rough neighborhood in, in New York or wherever 
that they would be like, no, that ain't, he ain't on point with that. No, they would they would sit here and repeat right. everything I'm saying too, because that's what happens. And so not and, and a lot of them went to putting it in their music, you know. A lot of the real ones like myself, we use that as an outlet. We started off rapping like that as an outlet, you know, and you know, some, you know, you got your fakes that that, that you know you call them wannabes like when they rapped about they rap about it but they haven't really lived it but see to me that's kind of really stupid because like why would you want to live it you know if you if you lived it you'd be writing sad songs like me shit <laughs> you know what I'm saying like did you listen to a couple of songs yeah, yeah. yeah so and, and and a lot of people know you know I put my story out there a lot like you know at one point I, I caught myself like I think I was making too many of them. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I just made a sad song about this the other day. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm doing it again, and I just, I, I'm making another one. So I had to kind of like, okay, let me write about, you know, because things is better now. So let me do some uplifting stuff. Sometimes it's a habit just to release it, and and so that's why sometimes I, I look and be like, okay, I got four. I got four in a row. Like, let me, let me, <laughs> let me, let me stop really, let me release something else that I'm doing to inspire, you know? Yeah. It is um, so powerful. Regardless though, I listened to them this morning, getting ready to go to, to work. And I think, um, well, yeah, I did. I made sure in the <laughs> order that you said too, I had them like the play next was all in order, um, brushing my teeth, like listening along. And um, I think what's really cool is that yes, the content is, like heavy, right? Like there's real pain, there's real life. Um, and at the same time, the ability to turn that into something that is, um, just empowering to listen to, um, Mm -hmm. real is, as like beautiful, I think, you know, um, to turn hardship into artwork is not, um, easy, but I think it has the chance to change so many lives. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, people yeah. who maybe have shared experience who get to listen to this are like okay I can turn my negative experiences into something really powerful too that's exactly. that's good stuff that's really good stuff yeah because you know what I could have did was what 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 is designed uh for us to do I'm gonna just say that what 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 I mean a lot of stuff is designed for a trap basically so what I'm saying is it's designed for us to not only fail but but just explode like I could have just there's been times I wanted to attract, but I'm like my spirit ain't that's that's not who I am so I just I explode in my music but you know the mission for whoever just put us in this trap you know I'm gonna leave that there but it's for us to explode and I didn't do that so I just exploded my music some people have majority of the people have you know they exploded and just like but uh uh Eminem raps he used to rap a lot about it you know he you know as he grew he 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 changed some stuff and you know used more of his versatility but we all know he had a lot of you know I'm sorry mama and dear mama the songs and you heard them by by Eminem you know he had a video of him digging the grave for his mom and you know what I'm saying like so he had a lot of pain issues too And, and a lot of us do and we just you know, what better way is to, you know, put it in a rap, you know? I mean, I'm, I don't promote what him sending a threat or, because uh, I think she sued him for that. Like, that was a little too deep. But I mean, I whether him put it in a rap about digging a grave for his mom and, you know, put it in a, in your music other than really wait outside her house to go do it. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, that's a very important. Yeah, this is practice, our only. Right? <laughs> our music is the only ears that will listen. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, I love that's a really important phrase. I think that you said, like, if no one else is listening, and like, you know, <laughs> that you can listen to, be there. That's awesome. That's right. so beautiful. Um, yeah. So I love you. Know, we've we've talked. We've like hinted at what your music is. You've talked a little bit about where the content comes from. How would you describe the style of your music? Um, and maybe from there we can talk a little bit about what your process is like of making music. Like, are you always you know sitting in your house, like staring out the window, or is it something different? Like, I'd love to hear more. Yeah, well, the style of my music is reality rap. You know, it's just reality. But like aside from that, you know, I like to uh, cause cause I'm real good at it. So you know, I like to 
you know, explore all avenues and, you know, to f show my full potential of what I could do to show that I'm a real lyricist that so I can, um, you know, I want to do versatility songs. Like I said, I, I said Lady Gaga early because that we all know that, you know, you, who, who, act, who what hip hop artists like would say, oh, I'll feature with Lady Gaga. I just said that, to, you know, highlight the fact that I can go there if I wanted to. You know, I can do a lady, I could do a song with Lady Gaga from Madonna to, um, to Guns N' Roses, whatever. Like, yeah. not saying I would, you know, would go that far with certain people like uh, heavy metal and all that. But, I, you know, I just want to explore my, you know, my skills of in music. You know, I want to be versatile, you know. So my style is overall is reality rap of where I come from and, you know, just messages. There's a message in all my music. But, you know, I like to have fun with it. Club music. You know, I make some club bangers for the club. You know, I'm human. You know, I like to see some females and, you know, all that nice cars and all that type of shit. So, uh, yeah, you know, so my style is, is versatility is what I want to get into more. I want to show more of my versatility. Everybody know, you know, Saviti, the reality rapper, he spits real, real music and for us to relate to. But, you know, let me hop into some club over here, you know, do a feature with different artists, you know, a country artists with a guitar in the background. And so I'm ready to get into all that, you know. That's so cool. I'm thinking of, um, I met a visual artist once, so she was a painter and her work would always be very abstract. Like it would be broad stroke, right. like not recognizable, but she was like classically trained, right? She had the skill set to draw a tree right to look like a real tree if she wanted to. And so she, that versatility mattered a lot to her too, to be like, so she would keep a journal, I think of like drawings that were not the style that she sold, but to prove to the world and to herself, she's like, I can do all this other stuff too, but I'm yeah. choosing this and I'm- Because, yeah, because you know. know, like I said, I started off with with my pain and just spitting all I knew, but as as I was spitting it to myself, you, I, I thought even before other, you know, some of the homies and other people was telling me like, like, man, you should take it further. Like you cold at that. You really good. I kind of thought that for myself anyway, when I, I'm like, I'm like, man, I, uh, I'm pretty dope at this, you know? So then when they told me, you know, and I took it a little further, I was like, when I got real good, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could be a, be a hip hop artist one day, famous, making money and taking care of my family and, you know, all that stuff. So when I thought of that and when I got to that point, to that level, I was like, OK, well, if I'm this good, you know, let me try to, you know, push myself to the limit. Like, Let me test myself. Can I go in this style? Can I do in this style? Can I do uplifting music? Can I do uh, even a, a gospel song for the Lord, for the older people could listen to? Can I do some club booty shaking music? Well, yeah, you know, can I do, you know, different avenues of music, you know, cause one thing that I don't rap about is, is killing and all that, you know? And uh, if you, you listen to all 17 songs on my album, you know, I rap, I, I do, my deliverance is hood and street cause that's where I'm from. But like a couple people, they they don't they didn't listen like I hate when people don't listen because a couple people did judge me like they just heard how I was delivering it and maybe a few curse words or something that I'm saying and they they right off the top judged me but they're not listening to the words though right I'm not talking about killing people in my music you know I, I may be talking about a big booty chick dancing on top of a car and that's my lifestyle that's what I like to see that's like what I like to do that don't mean that. I'm not doing other songs to delivering positive messages to uplift the community or like the who are we really video. Did you see that? The no, I haven't. I have to watch that still. You, you I, got to like, check in it. I promise. I yeah, promise. So, you know, with different cultures, and that was real big to me. Uh it was it was last summer because I do my big videos every summer for the city to come and all my fans and stuff. I do one big one for the whole city every summer. So this one was a cultural one with different cultures like Somalians, Africans, natives, like I had them all and they came dressed in uniform. And that was just to, to represent like, who are we really meant? Who do we really know? Like, or are we all, we're all the same at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, we wake up every day we leave the house, 
we all put on a mask, whether we like to believe it or not. And what I mean by that, it could be a negative mask or, I'm sorry about this. I, I got it. So, or it could be, it could be a negative mask or a positive one. And what I mean by that is if you go to court, you're not going to act like yourself. You're going to put in a mask. Mm -hmm. If you go to a job interview, you're going to put in a mask. Them is good masks. You, you know, you, I would hope you put on a mask for that, but, uh, or you could just be something you ain't in a negative way. And you know, there's, you know, there's a mask for that. So basically that's what, who are we really meant? That was the definition of that video. So I do stuff like that. A lot of people don't give me the credit for it. You know, the certain people that just, just against certain things and they just think we hood thugs coming out and doing music well you know they they gotta pay close enough attention like you and i appreciate that oh my pleasure i um i feel so privileged to get to learn from you yeah. so just thank you times a million um and and i prom I, I will dm you when i get look at the video because um i'm so excited to experience it, and, hear it. And, my reaction. Yeah. So you and i was inviting everybody you could have been invited with your family you know it was i, I put up flyers and put up posts it was for everybody so you know cool. janine was actually i think she was out of town that day but i actually offered her a role in it like i think she was gonna come dressed as something like yeah that's that's, Whoa, my that's exciting so we'll stay tuned for what next year's um definitely duration will be <laughs> For sure. Um, I'd love to hear more about the, so you, you released an album in the relatively recent um, months, I think, right? Was it, when did that album? Uh, I just released it uh, about three weeks ago now. Okay, so not even a month yet. Yeah, um, it's fresh. It's, it's the new one. Go get that. Everybody's watching. It's, it's called Twin City, S-H-I-T. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's everywhere on all platforms worldwide. Just type in Saviti, S-A-V-I-T-T-Y, it'll pop up. Yes. So if you would, I want to hear more about, like, when did the idea come for the album? How, like, how long was it, you know, making it? What was it like to go about this endeavor? What did you learn from it? Just whatever comes to mind for you about this experience. Right. Well, the idea of it is to put my, to, to put the Twin Cities on the map, you know, put, put Minnesota on the map, St. Paul on the map, because we've all tr tried, you know, all my friends, artists, and, you know, we, we, they've done well at it. We, 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 you know, we never stopped trying. Like, you know, I know Prince is from here and uh, it just seems like um, it, it was more on the map with, with the George Floyd incident than anything. And we, you know, I, I knew that and I kind of wanted to put it on the map in a positive way other than, a negative way like what happened to George Floyd so my thing is to name it you know Twin City-ish and um that's the radio version Twin City-ish <laughs> but to name it that was just like everything I do with my videos and certain songs especially my videos I want you know want to represent something with Minnesota Vikings Jersey Twin City like in the Twin City video I had everybody come dressed in Vikings and twins and twins uniforms Whoa. Oh yeah, they was deep in there with jerseys on, Vikings and Twin City jerseys, and that's just my whole idea is just to, you know, I got, I got the, you know, the mess right here, as you can't see it, but it's on a hat. But my whole thing of that whole album and the name of that is just to put us on the map, you know, not for me just to hold the throne and the, the name like, oh, Savitti's the one that did it, and because a lot of people, you know, they're they're in it for that, you know, that's not what I'm in it for. It's just that. We got a lot of talent here, you know, uh, and, you know, we've tried hard. Uh, we've been in the field with the music and different talents and no one's really, they really don't know us. You know, it's like they they even get our name wrong. They say Mini, Minneapolis and, you know, they just. No way. They don't even know us. So, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, plant the seed to make it. I'm doing a good job about it, too. <laughs> That's so cool. I've been learning lately about this idea of like a kingdom mindset versus like your microcosm of the world. And I, and I think that, you know, you're drawing attention to your city is so meaningful for so many people, right? That's something that you can all share. And that visual of everyone wearing the Vikings jersey, but everyone looking different. Um, yeah, I think is that dope. is very special. Yeah, it's dope. They showed up too. They, they was at the stores buying jerseys 
calling me phone was blowing up what color did you what should we wear again what should we it, it was it was it was nice you know you might see to make some commission off of those sales from the vikings team or something i don't know like yeah, yeah like you know i mean they owe me you know in that that video that's hit, how like, i see it i don't know yeah. um but that's so cool um and, and, and a lot of people you know they 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 but see my thing is is to get it out more like even though it hit the numbers did good like in the first two weeks it was like 5k or it, it was like the, I thought it was just finna explode but you know they kind of calmed down and all that that's cool though because you know uh, just because the numbers kind of calmed down don't mean I'm going to you know so, yeah. <laughs> so I got some coming next for him just to and everything I do I want to put Twin Cities in there that's my whole thing you know Twin City-ish you know got shirts coming all that just so you know that's so cool. Um, I'll look forward to seeing all the things I learned about the Twin Cities through knowing you and your work. Definitely. Oh, you will. Definitely. I'll be a spokesperson too, uh, a fan I from a distance um, of, of Minnesota. So um, with this album, you produced it like as your own label. Is that the right way to describe that? Or as your own, like, how many yeah, well, that means? <laughs> I'm independent with it right now. So Civiti means survival tribe survival tribe and so survival tribe entertainments and you know that's my own independent thing although uh like you know some labels is calling me and because i want a contest so they they want to fly me out I, I went to a few of them you know they didn't really offer me what i expected so i i'm not such a young i'm not really a young uh artist to just just want to blow up and you know like that anymore so you know i kind of turned them down <laughs> you know they didn't really offer me what I wanted so you know I'm more patient with it and to be honest I'm doing fine on my own right now and so I just want to keep you know moving forward with what I'm doing until you know I consider a, a, a good offer you know from somebody but yeah you know I'm just paying the way for us right now and a lot of this is all on my own you know so it's an album i put out 17 songs to really a lot of people are putting out like uh 12 songs 13 some even 10 you know but i want to give them 17 just just to you know give them a, a bonus <laughs> why not how generous that's awesome yeah, um I think when we were getting to know each other, you shared about maybe having taken a different approach in the past than now in terms of like producing on your own and waiting for that right offer. Can you talk a little bit about what you learned? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. So this album, you know, it means so much to me because I did it with, you know, my blood, sweat and tears, put everything into it. And I'm most proud because I did it myself, like I said, independently. And the reason why I'm so proud about that, because you know, when I was younger, and you know, I won't say no, you know, I won't mention no names, but when I was younger, I was I was with a label that put my first, my first, a lot of people don't know I had a first album already. So when I put it up, they put it out. And you know, when you're you when you're going into the game young and really not knowing nothing, just so excited to be on, on the TV screen and do what you love, you really don't check into it like you're supposed to on the business hand of it. Mm -hmm. So they put it out and they got paid a lot of money and I didn't get not one cent, like not, not one penny. And so when I was, you know, there was some things that was confronted about it and, and it, it didn't go well with all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like for, for anybody that's watching this, like if you watch the NWA story, the, the movie, that's exactly what happened to me and in the group I was in, you know, we was What's just like uh, NWA with Ice Cube okay. and, yeah, the NW stay with Easy E and Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and the whole yeah. So you have to look that up. Yeah. But you know, it, it's the same. And for the viewers that's watching, they may you know they may uh, know what I'm talking about. Most of them probably will. But yeah, so you know, it's just a similar story of NWA. You know, they went in blind too. They was young and they got robbed out of it, and so did I. And so now that's why. I mean, I literally walked into the store and seen my CD sitting on the shelf. You know, yes, me and uh, the lady I was with at the time, she she was actually featured on the disc with me. She was excited, jumping up and down, like like oh, like, look, that's our that's our CD in the store. Like, wow, I was, you know, for a minute I was I was in shock, like that, that that's what's up. Like, wow, that's cool. But then immediately I thought, like like, okay, let's 
let's make a call. Let's call them. Let, let, let's yeah. let's see what the money's looking like. And then that's when we just getting sent off. You know, they we walked in ourselves and seen it on the shelf and then get not one penny from that. So that was just a whole big learning experience, you know. And then you, you know, I had some homies calling me from Los Angeles, like sent they got a box of my CDs sitting on their porch delivered and my my albums floating around LA. Cause you know, that that's what we was plugged in with and the whole thing with the, you know, West coast and, you know, um, we just plugged in like that through there. And that's where the label was like from. And, and they got, they was all out there in LA selling my music. And, you know, I was getting these calls from these people saying, yeah, your album's bumping it's out here. So that was just letting me know that money was being made, but none was given to me. <laughs> I darn it. So, you know, and I took that as, you know, I just took that as, you know, a learning lesson for now, you know, because like I said, I was younger then, but, you know, it, everything is just a thing. You can't just dive into it. You definitely can't. So that's what I would tell the young artists watching this, you know, don't be excited just to get involved with something, thinking that it's all good and you're going to be shining on TV and making money when, you, you know, you don't really know nothing about it. Yeah. What I like in listening to and hearing in your story is that even though that first experience was such a scorching like ouch right um that you bounced back from it like you took the learnings from it and turned it into okay this is how I'm doing it differently now um, I did that's why this album now means so so like like I, I was emotional I, I think I did tear up you know once I completed it I was alone I just had a moment yeah like, hey th this is all me you know, can't nobody tell me nothing about it. This is all my money. And because I had a moment, because I remember what happened to it, you know, with the first album. And, you know, uh, it, it's it's a lot. It's a big thing when an artist complete their album, especially on their own. Like, nobody helped me with this, you know? And I was doing my thing. And, and so the first album, real quick, a funny story, it was out there so much that people didn't even know were, you know, because I had no money, I was still walking the streets and was really, you know, there's a part where I, point where I was homeless at the time and no car. And, you know, I used to hear people playing my music in the drive through at McDonald's and people riding past me playing. You know, I, I walked up to one car, I ain't gonna lie, because they was in the parking lot just just banging my shit, right? So I walked out, I'm, I'm like, man, y'all y'all feeling that music, man? I was like, man, I appreciate that. I just want y'all to know that, you know, that that's me right there, y'all listening to oh. me. But it was embarrassing because they kind of looked like, they was like, bro, that's, it's like they weren't feeling, they 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 didn't know, they didn't believe me, or then I had to walk off. I, I wasn't walking away from them, getting in the BMW and riding, you know what I'm saying? I walked straight off, like walking down the street. After I said it, so I'm like, man, that, that felt that felt horrible. But they was in my car, just they was in the car, just banging. Oh, and then God. one one person, uh, he uh, he wrote, now nah, I'm gonna call him out because that's like my cousin, like uh, Glover. Glover, this was for you, man. So Glover, but he didn't know that it was mine and I was making money. He didn't know anything, so he had the disc and you know, he rolled up to me and a couple of homies on the block. And you, that's how we crack jokes. He he was like, man, he's like, man, I know somebody that's harder, that's doper, it's colder than you, man. Severity that he's like, man, you this rapper here, man. You, I bet all my money in my pocket, man. You and the whole block, like, man, who you talking about? Like, who better than me? You know? And then he, he was like, man, hold on, I'm about to play the song. He's like, he's like, man, watch, man. He's like, man, you can't. He's like, man, I bet you every money, man. I think he got you, man. He, he better than you on this. He's pumping his head up to believe this. And man, he played it, and it was me. <laughs> wow, that's, <laughs> cool. Look, oh my that's that's my best story. That that's that's like the best compliment I ever got. A mistakenly compliment that wasn't meant to be given, right. and like, like that 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 right there is the story of the year. Because he he was like, man, that's you, and they, everybody started laughing. He's like, for real, man. He's like, you ain't bullshit, man. For real. He's like, man, put that on. So he couldn't believe it. Cause he was put, he rolled up on us, and they a lot of people like to just hop out on me, call me out with, cause they knew I I've been uh you know I've been holding it down, you know, at, known as you know one of the the greatest with it, and so he tried to call me out, and he he wanted to bet some money. He he was really serious. I thought he wasn't serious, 
And he he was looking for the song. He's like, no, watch, I'm gonna find it. He's like, man, he's like, for real, he said, you cold, man, but like, man, I've been listening to this dude all day, man. He's like, watch, man. He's like, man, he, I think he got you, man. And he, he found the song and he pushed play and it was, it was me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, oh my goodness. That's such an authentic compliment, right? Because you that's know the they best. weren't trying I, I to so gas you up. <laughs> I, just, I just took that. I'm taking that, that compliment all the way to heaven with me, man. <laughs> a good souvenir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's such a beautiful story. I'm so glad that you shared it. And um, on this His album, name is Glover. I hope you see this. I love it. That's my boy Glover, man. Glover, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you were, you know, preparing me to experience your album, there was three songs that you underscored, right? You talked about Hard Trials, My Crucifixion, and a third one, the name is escaping me um, in this moment. Uh, but I, Letter to Black Sheep. Letters to Black Sheep, yes. Um, I would love to he- for you to, to share a little bit about why those are like the trifecta that matters and um, you know, what it was like to walk through writing those songs for you. Well, well walking through writing them, uh, I, I, I could like barely get through them without, you know, without tearing up, you know, cause they, they so emotional songs and heartfelt. And like, I, I teared up the whole time. I had to take breaks, you know, <laughs> I did like, yeah. I, I had to, take, I had to get back to, I, I think, and I'll be honest, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't mind sharing all this. Like, I threw, I, like when I was writing down some notes, like I, I threw the whole notebook and like said like, fuck that. And, you know, I was by myself, just talking to myself, Ugh, threw, the, threw it down. I mean, that's how serious it was. But, you know, they, they important because it's three parts of my life story, you know, and them are the three parts that I'm gonna share visually through my music. And then I am writing my book called King of Survival. You know, I'm halfway through that. And then like the, the rest of the way, um, it will be told in a movie theater. And I, 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 I ain't going to share who's going to put that out. But I'm, I will say this. I will, I will say this. I'm going to give you all this. The biggest, I mean, this might go ahead and tell it all now, but I will say the biggest, um, produced music music um uh, movie producer that's out there right now i'll let you take one guess after i say that but i won't reveal it but one of the biggest uh the biggest movie uh producer that's out there i don't know any movie producers so you i don't i will don't watch tv I, I hardly do but i will go to that movie with reese's pieces and popcorn and be very excited so, so whoever whatever come to people's mind the viewer's mind when i say that just run with it but yes yeah. yeah, so, you know that uh, you know the overall story will be put together in the movie theaters but you know for now just visually through my music is the hard trials letters to black sheep so if, if the viewers is watching y'all type of my album anywhere you know you can go to hard trials letters to black sheep and my crucifixion you know those the, the, those are just you know i mean because i think everybody one of the one of the purposes on earth here on having life that we all share is to you know inspire some some pieces of our story some pieces of our uh experiences that we had in life yeah. you know that's you know a lot of people you know they got we all got different purposes in life we know that but one one of them that we all share is to you know tell your story see who you can inspire i love that but i know a lot of people that read this book and, you know, you, cause I've been interviewed and, you know, I used to speak and to tell pieces of my story on, in front of a whole everywhere on boats in different cities everywhere. So, you know, a lot of people wonder, the question is, is how did you survive? How did you survive? How did you survive? You know, and I try to break it down as good as I can. Cause you know, they start pulling me to the side and wanting me to give more details to instructors and like people were trying to tell me how to speak because the only thing I used to say was G O D, baby. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> basically that's the only thing I used to say is God. Like, cause I really didn't know how to dig all into, cause after I would say God, like an old lady would stand up like, but but tell us how would you, you know, the mic was going around and some lady said, You're like the 
passion of Christ and Jesus. And seriously, she cried. Man, this lady was in tears telling me this and, you know, wanting my autograph. And like, I've been through a lot of speaking engagements with my story. And I'm featured in Peter Hegar's book with amongst other legends and, and you know, out there. And uh, we can dig into that on another note, too. Like, you see, you ain't know, like, it's a lot. Yeah. But so... Basically, yeah, I've been in newspapers. I won awards from the state and um, the chief of police. I was, except the chief of police delivered the award to me. Shout out to John Harrington from Ujama, where I won that those awards through the program. And um, it's, it's big. It's, it's enlightening, you know, to, to give back now. Yes. You know? Because I used to be, I used to didn't speak at all. Believe it or not, as much as I'm talking now and as and I do music and I perform and I ain't shy with nothing no more. I used to not talk at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 definitely God. And I think, you know, um when there are no other words, like the fact that you just gave credit where credit was due, like that is enough for him. That is really cool that you were able to do that. Do you feel like um so I know that you kind of mentioned that people would probe you on like, but how? But like, but what? For my kind of tilt on that is, you know, how did you know to give credit rather than like, how did you know it was him? Like, had because I, I think that there's a lot of happening around us, but not right, all okay. noticing, and that's I'm what we've to, noticed. Okay, now, now this is a heavy one, okay? You, I you love it. Handle this one. I'm gonna give you the heavy stuff. I, I appreciate your platform. I'm gonna give you the heavy one right here, and I want everybody to know this for real. And I don't care, but I'm writing the whole book. You're going to know it anyway. So you said, how did I know it was him? It's like, because in, in long story short, try to speed it up. You, uh, you know, I was going through a homeless situation, right? One of them I've been through, uh, you know, I was homeless for 17 years straight. It's the whole, we save all the good stuff for the book and stuff. But, you know, one day I was, I was uh, it was, of course, winter freezing and I was out there and, and, and like, I wanted to give up. I mean, it was so cold, like I couldn't, I was done. Like I'm talking about hands, it was just fire burning, right? And I was going through it. I was going through the most. So I wanted to give up. And one day, you know, I've been putting in these applications for, for these cribs and, you know, they keep turning me down and just flushing me down. I'm like, you know, God, what's up with this is, you know, cursing him out at the same time. And like, you know, I was really just like on some F you God. And like, I, I'm talking about, I was a wreck, right? right? Drunk, of course, at the same time. And so one night I was out there. It was, it was like, uh, I was like, it was, I couldn't take it. My skin, like, like in my song, I said, skin breaking, breaking like cheap leather. Yep. I remember <laughs> those that? lines. <laughs> so look, one time, long story short, one time I was, I was like, I was like, God, if I said, I'm talking to Jesus, the guy that they call Jesus, whether that's your name or not, talking to the guy, that, your son that was sent here to save us, the guy walked in water, whatever. I said, you know, if, if you don't let this phone ring with with apartment saying that I got the place and can move in and stop being homeless out here I said I'm killing myself this ain't too hard for your platform is it? I'm here I'm listening I, I, I said I'm I said I'm ending it I couldn't take it right I said I'm but I told you like literally I said okay I'm, I'm killing you know taking my <laughs> taking myself out I already knew how I was gonna do it I planned it and everything but I was saying you said you wouldn't take us through more you can bear. You you know that line? Of course. I said you said, <laughs> you said you wouldn't take us through more than we can bear. I said, if you do not let this phone ring, I'm talking to the man who came here to walk. I'm killing myself. I can't take it. If no, if this phone don't ring, I said, I'm putting you on front street. I'm I'm it confronting you. That's the last thing I said. If you don't let it rain, I don't kill myself. So then I, I, I dozed off because I was faded. I was drunk, right? So, so I fell asleep and I, I woke up because the phone rang, right? I woke up. So when I looked at the phone, it said that I only dozed off for three minutes because, you know, I was just clocking the time and stuff. And so I looked at the clock. It was uh, only three minutes that I dozed off. So I'm like, hello? It was like, well, um, 
Yeah, hi. Can I speak to Mr. Michaela? You know, we're this is a blah blah part apartments, and we just want you to know that you got approved for your place, and we want to know if you can come get your keys and sign the lease and move in today. Wow, mic drop. So, so that that was that was it right there. You know, let me ask you something. Do you feel that was just a coincidence? No, not in the slightest. You know, so, and then, you know, just another piece to it. After I, I was like, I, you know, I'm so geeked up that she said, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, cool. You know, I try to shape up real quick. But when she, when I hung up with her, I was like, I was like, what? I was like that. I was like, God, did you? But then I was like, why did I have to, why did you do this to me? I'm like, that was you. Well, why did I? So I still had questions, but I was like, cool, whatever. So I went over there. <laughs> I, w- I went over to the place. And when uh, this is the place that was turning me down from my felonies back to back, you know, there was already turning me down. And when we was in the elevator, the, 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 the lady, the management lady, when I was like, uh, because I knew what happened and I didn't I ain't want to sound crazy by telling her. So I was just like, you know what? Um, I was like, can I ask you what made you uh, say that I was approved when, when y'all was turning me down and saying that I wasn't? And guess what she said? I can't See, wait to hear. The kicker right here. She said, she was like, um, she thought about it. She said, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's just something just pulled on my heartstrings about you. I don't know. That's what she said when we was in the elevator. Oh my gosh. And you're like, I know. <laughs> I, right. I wanted to say like, God did it. <laughs> like, like, like DJ oh, Kelly, God. God did. He got an album called God did. But but uh, that that was it. That was it. So from that point on, I knew, you know, even though, you know, other things happened and I, I didn't really, we are human, you know. You would think that I'd just be all the way together and straight serving him after that. It didn't happen like that, but he, you know, he appreciated how far I'm coming with it and doing things. And, you know, I got him, you know, I got him. Even even with through some of my music and whatever the fuck it is or whatever, I got him, he got me. But I that that's how I knew right there. And when I was telling these people that I'm speaking to, I was leaving it at that. They never even heard this story either that I just told you. Like, yeah, man, not too. People heard it just now, but you know what? My sister, my mama, my brother, they haven't heard that story. You have. Uh, I mean, it has been such a gift to me to know that story. And I, my favorite song of, of those three is the My Crucifixion one. Cause I was like, this guy, we're going to have fun. We're going to have a really cool conversation. <laughs> Uh, about that G-O-D. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I'll tell you one thing about that, that story that my crucifixion is when I was saying uh, halfway went blind in, in the hook part is because, see, a lot of people don't know. Like like I said, and, and, and this is the only thing I give y'all this, but, you know, the rest is for the book. That, But a lot of people don't know that I went half blind. Like, that's why I'm saying it in, through that through, throughout that whole song is because there was a night that was like, like it was worse than I just described. Like this night, this was the worst night that I've ever been out there, existed. Snow was like waist high. It was one, one year we got a crazy uh, blizzard and, and it was freezing. It was like 30 below zero. I'm talking about, talking about torture, right? You would, you think I'm, a, uh, you think I'm God Himself the way I survived, right? Because it was freezing, and and it uh, it it made me blind for two and a half weeks. Yeah, I was uh, my vision was just I, I only had like five percent vision. Like, I'm talking about I went to go to the hospital. I couldn't. I was I was a mess. I, I couldn't see. I was seeing in blurs. Two and a half weeks. I was getting scared. I was like, damn. Like I'm really going blind like Ray Charles, like the story of how he went blind. And I was like, I'm really going blind because out there that night, you know, it was, it was, you know, I'm laying on the ground. A kid thought I was dead in the snow. He's like, mommy, is he dead? You know what I'm saying? I went, this ain't too heavy for your platform. No, I'm here. I'm just going to have to buy the rest later. (laughs) But I went blind in that song. So that's why I wrote, was saying some of that. 
That is wild. And that you remember, though, like the child who was walking past you. Yeah, I remember there was a little okay. boy. Yep, there was a little boy. Mommy, is he? He said, Mommy, is he dead? He said, Mommy, is he dead? And she was like, Sir, are you okay? Come up to me. All that. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. It is what a journey. But I mean, the perspective that you hold um, at, at this point is is so cool. Um, you know, taking all of that into account. And what a privilege that you're sharing some of your story here. I really don't take it lightly. So thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And and so whatever people take from that, especially when they read the book or whatever, my overall message to that, you know, I'm I'm example of just, and, and I know it sounds crazy to say, Hey, you you could survive what I survived too. Uh you because because man, you probably can't. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like I, I see, how, see how real I am. I'm just being real. But the only thing I, I'm trying to you know say is is what you should take from it is is it's possible. That's all I'm saying. Like it, it's possible. Um keep the faith. I didn't turn my back on God, you know, like the story of Job, what he went through. Yeah. And then a lady told me that too. She's like, she said, like, you got the story of Job. And I was like, I was like, who, who's Job? What's that? And then when I read it, she told me to read like, and like how he got tested and tried and family slaughtered in one hour and all this pain and survived and didn't, and didn't curse God, like turn his back on. I cursed him, but I cursed him out, but I didn't, I never turned my back. And, 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 and so that's my message like that I hope they get from this is, if you can't take the heat, don't turn your back on his feet. <laughs> Amen. So many good like one-liners from this. I'm gonna have to pull out and like write down and just keep on deck. Um, for if those you can't moments. take the heat, don't turn your back on his feet. Because if you do, then he won't follow. You know. You know. I mean, Absolutely. you know, he'll, he'll be in the back of you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right. It wouldn't be good. Um, but Joe is a perfect example. And I'm so glad that you bring that up. Um, yeah. as we so like we've gone on this full journey, it's been so um, you know, valuable to spend time with you and also just fun because you're a fun person to speak with. And I appreciate, you know, your time and your energy here. Um, and we're wrapping up. I want to know in your words why making music matters. What keeps inspiring and motivating you? to pursue this thing that is not easy? Well, music matters just like black lives matter, white lives matter, every life matter, because like I said, it was what helped me. Like music was like, like I could hear a song now. I, I know it does a lot of, you know, they say the music's the devils, whatever, and all that. That's true because it, anything that can trigger your emotions and, you know, uh, that can make you do bad things is from the devil. But, you know, I use it in a good way, like far as if, I, if I'm in a, having a bad day, I could throw on some, you know, uh, some soothing music, some pianos and some soft jazz or whatever, some nice music, R&B songs and, you know, soothing my, time, my, my, my day out, make me feel better. So music matters, man, because it has messages in it, you know, like the Who Are We Really video, and the letters of black sheep and hard trials and my crucifixion, you know, it, it gets us through, you know, it can get us through the day. Now, if you use it in a, you know, it, it's, you got to know how to use it, balance it out. You know, if you want to use it in a negative way and listen to all that crazy shit, then, you know, then that's, that's where you're going wrong. But, you know, music matters the most because it can soothe in our day, you know? Yeah. I agree. Certain you know, you it, you in the morning and you know you you cook it for your husband or your, your your wife you know you're dancing in the room and you know it set the mood right you know just good vibes in the air absolutely yeah it's um our minds are something that's that are prone to wander right so if we can try to anchor them with good things or things that bring about that that mood that that is desired um and that is good. And the I main thing I, I like to say that that I that I do like about music and what I'm what my favorite thing to do with it is storytelling. You mm -hmm. know, storytelling. Like I got the series coming out, the No Trust series. So it's a uh, No Trust series. Episode one is actually on the album. 
Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know that, but I mean, whatever, I'll give you all that because, you know, the visuals come for it too. So, yeah, uh, episode one is on the album. It's called No Trust. And it's a series, you know, like, I don't know if you know, uh, heard of R. Kelly's Trapped in the Closet before. Yeah, so basically it's music video series. Like, um, can you still see me? Yes, all good. Yeah, so music video series, like, I'm telling a story and it, at each, uh, song and visual and we can next song you know part two part three. Wow. i think it's seven um seven seasons of that seven seasons of that coming for you so exciting definitely something to be looking forward to um for all of us and in your journey so far are there lessons that you've learned all along the way um, that we haven't shared yet that you think someone who's trying to make music or trying to appreciate life differently or just, you know, make sense of their world in a new way that, that you would share with them? Yeah, well, lesson number one is what I went through with the, you know, with the label. Just know what you're getting into. Don't be so quick to, you know, want to shine and, you know, make money and just basically show off what you got all that crazy stuff just dig into to the business deal learn the business of it first Mm. you know as far as music go and and all that and then like that's what life lessons too and just with what but my thing with life lessons is you know be patient with your decisions you know be more humble and uh you know just think about it and and i would say this most of people's most of people's biggest uh, problem is that they have is being tested. Like this goes for all my people, like from the streets and, and living in poverty. You know, we got to learn how to work with the people that don't care about their lives. They try to test you. You know, the people that don't care about their lives, that try to test you. Just, just work with it. Just ignore it. Just, move move different like you know because that's the most you know it's hard to because a person that don't care about their lives will come walk right up and spit in your face so what i'm saying is like you know, i ain't saying let them get away with that you know <laughs> but but just be be aware of those people that don't care about their lives move around them like get away from them. Yeah. get away from everybody that don't care about their life because they don't have nothing to lose so they'll take you down I mean, they'll they'll take themselves down in order to take you down. That's what I mean. Right. Oh, that's a powerful thing and really wise to be aware um, that not right. everyone's in the same Because it's been working for me. You know, it's been working for me. You, you know, it's called humbling down. It's just called being humble, not backing down. You ain't no punk. You ain't. I'm talking to my young shooters out there that like, stop, just put, stop all that. You know, like it's you ain't being no punk. You ain't been you actually you moving wise. And I've tried it a few times. Like, you know, th- there's been, you know, people or, or drunks and like cuss you out. You man, you 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 punk ass, you know, and just like you know, just, just walk away. Just like like cool, I'm gonna let you have that. I'm gonna let you have your drunk time right now. Walk away. It 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 just works, man. It works instead of feeding into it. So that's one thing that I did. I wanted to give the streets that, if you don't mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think that's so powerful. Um, I'm reading this book right now called Wild at Heart, and it's about um, a man's heart and desires and like um, how to show up like powerfully, right? Because that is right. Um, right. That, that might matter to um, a man. And so it's really cool to hear that powerful doesn't always mean engaging in the chaos right sometimes the most powerful thing you can do uh-huh. is not engage and you know what that is that is the most powerful thing you know self-defense is something else and, and if you have to take it there but that that's the most powerful thing is to just you know be wise it's just let it go like they say silence is like the best killer even though that got me slapped one time. One time I was with a crazy, I was with a crazy female one time. I silenced her to death. She slapped. She said, she hear me? I said, oops, I'm sorry. She slapped me so fast. She tried to, her reflex was, oh, I'm sorry. I said, man, I'm out of here, man. I grabbed my shit and it looked, that killed her more. Cause I didn't, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm like, huh? That, that's what you're doing? And I, I, man, I, she, 
that I'm talking about, I sent you to her grave. I grabbed my shit, was gone. <laughs> yeah, silence so, is revealing, right? It opens, <laughs> uh, it opens community <laughs> where it makes it clear that we're moving past a situation or something. I don't silence know. Is, is his best killer, but but sometimes, like like my situation, sometimes it, it kills so much. Like you got to know how to be silent. You got to know how to work with it. I was I was just doing it hardcore. I was on some other stuff. So sometimes it'll get you slapped. But but you just gotta be wise, man. Just I mean, what I mean, otherwise what? Like like what you trying to do? Like is you trying to? You gotta love yourself, man. You gotta exchange this good spiritual energy, you, you know. And then just another message for the females, or, or you know, that, well, they like to say this the most when, when they say like like uh, like you being uh, you and your feelings, like like stop being your feelings, like you and your feelings, like you and your feelings, like are you and your feelings, like. You, you you may hear that a lot. You you probably haven't, but you know you and your feeling, you and your feeling, you and your feeling. Well, I would just say to the people who like to say that, think it stuff's petty or you petty. You 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 where you hurt on your sleeve. You and you soft. You and your feelings. Get out your feelings. Well, you know God's gonna be in his feelings when he judges you. Yep. <laughs> Is there any better way to say it? Like like so so. That's all I gotta say is God's gonna be in his feelings when he judges you. And he's crying right now. So, like you telling me, I'm you, why don't you tell the man to get out his feelings who you pray to every day? Cause he's in them right now. Wow. Yeah. He is certainly um the most dynamic feeler, right? So that like I'm not supposed to be in my feelings, like I'm supposed to be stronger than God. Like God's in his feelings every day. Yep. And he's in his feelings every day. The Holy Spirit and his king, the king who came, all that good stuff. He's in his feelings. Like, but you, but I'm not supposed to be in mine because you think I'm God? Like, you think I'm strong enough not to be in mine? Like, I'm God? See, they, they got it twisted. You know, they, they, just, they just ain't thinking. Yeah, so I hear some big themes here of like just universally all of us humbling ourselves seeking out wisdom, right? Um, understanding or trying to like see where each other's coming from. Like these are all good things for the world to keep moving in some wholesome it, direction. You know, just live your best life because, you know, I, I ain't gonna get too deep to get to get your platform up. To, you know, they, they, oh, they're taking off, I go too deep. But I'll just say this, you know, where about living your life fruitfully now, moving forward because, basically prepare for what's coming is all you got to do you know you should be more focused on preparing for what's coming and what i mean by that is it's coming you know we just gonna leave it like that it's coming what is it it is it it's coming <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. that that's something you ain't gonna be able to move maneuver around and you can when it comes the only thing you're gonna be able to do is play out your your uh what you've been given the gifts you've been given the knowledge you've been given from the holy spirit you know what you've created for it. the only thing you're going to be able to do is just dis display that you can, you're not going to be able to do nothing else but display yep. what's inside you when it comes <laughs> so powerful so good oh i so appreciate you going there Savitti has been so fun to speak with you and so important and so impactful and all the good things and um, I hope that everyone checks out the album. I hope that everyone watches the video, follows along on your socials, which I'll link everywhere so that they know what's coming next. Um, and in the meantime, I hope this is a wonderful start to the almost weekend for you and that you get yeah. some Reese's Pieces in your near More future. More Reese's than popcorn. <laughs> More Reese's than popcorn all around. Um, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you for having me anytime. And, you know, we can do some catch up or whatever. If you want to, D, D, I'll DM you some extra stuff so you can check it out on, on your own time or whatever. Yes, please.